I knew that when we were going to open Quail Hollow that it's not about test scores. I understand that our children have to take an assessment and I totally think that we need to be held accountable. But what drives us is not a test score. First and foremost, we've got to build relationships with students. So um, just having high expectations isn't enough because students need to know that the adults that are around them believe in them and trust them and care about them. They saw mom and dad fight this morning. They didn't have breakfast this morning. Uh, they didn't have any food in the house. They dressed in the dark because their power's been cut off. Uh, they have no running water. They don't have clean clothes. Uh, they, uh, their grandparents just died. All this, this emotional baggage, now that's life. That's life, don't get me wrong. But in order for our kids to be successful, we cannot, we can't just ignore those things and then expect all of our kids to look and act the same when they walk through the door of this school and say, okay, sit down and we're gonna learn because it doesn't happen. This can't just be a place where we come and um, learn our academic standards. We're about the whole child and in order for our children to master standards, the social emotional side of developing a child is just as important. And we know that in order for children to master standards, it begins with the relationship between the staff and the students. We want to make sure that teachers and leaders have high expectations for all students. Now, that sounds easier than it actually is, but uh, there's a lot that can happen when you just believe that a student can reach high standards, even if you may have evidence that they haven't been able to do that in the past. Sometimes all it takes is one teacher uh, or one school that really believes in a student's ability to complete rigorous work. All of our students here would say we're tough and um, we let them know there's not a second where they're not working and they're not doing you know, the highest level that they can be doing, but at that same time, I love you, I see you, I know this might be frustrating, um, but we're gonna get you there. Um, and as soon as you have that relationship down, you kind of become one of those people that they want to make proud. Um, it's like a family concept. I have a sense that from the top down, the people have a real heart for the children. Um, that, that that is their focus, that they're not just there to collect a paycheck, they're there because they do have a love for the children and what they're doing and for their future. Like they truly care. You know, we come to parent meetings and I swear when we go into his classroom, 20 other students from other classrooms, other grades come in to give Ms. Rodriguez and Ms. Karkash a hug and it's just like a big family. And, and I just think it's, it's really good because these days it, it, I think it's hard to keep a family all together and when you have a family at school and at home, I think it's great. We truly know that if we're really, again, serious about changing lives, that we have to look at the whole child. And so we have to make sure that we um, have rigorous instruction um, in our classrooms. But in order for that to happen, kids have to feel safe in those environments. And so we really work here to create a school family. And within that school family, it's about kids feeling, um, yeah, physically safe, safe from somebody hurting them or physically um, um, harming them. But it's also about um, them being safe uh, emotionally. And that has to be all in check in order for us to really ever get to reach our academic standards. One of the things that we do to ignite that fire uh, in educators is take a look at what students are actually being asked to do every day. One of the things we found in our research and work with schools is that often students are not being given sufficient opportunities to work on grade level work, uh, grade level content. So one of the things that's actually very powerful and very easy to do, relative, uh, relatively speaking, is uh, just take a look at what students are being asked to do and does that match up with the standards for their grade level and content area. We spend a lot of time honestly um, looking at standards and really unpacking them to see what they mean. Um, we don't use a necessary this curriculum, necessarily this curriculum or that curriculum. We look at here's what we want our students to do and what they're going to have to do in the real world one day. Um, and then again, collaboratively, here's the ways that we could teach it. Here's what's going to um, push them to the highest level that way. 
There are some constants. I don't care whether you're in Pasco County, Miami-Dade, or Calhoun County. Uh, it, it, there's just some constants. Know the standards. Everything has to be around those standards. I don't care where you are, it's about the Florida standards. Uh, provide professional learning opportunities for your teachers. Um, and not, not professional learning opportunities that you think they need. Some of that is, has to happen, but professional learning opportunities of things that teachers believe that they need in order to be successful in their classroom. People take the time to develop you here. There's never a time where I come in and, and if I have a question and say, I really don't understand this, they're going, oh, you'll just have to figure this out. They really come together. We have PLCs where we work together as a team. We have professional development where we work together as a team. We use TBIT to solve out problems of students. Um, everybody's in here for the whole student, and it's not just um, you know my kids or your kids, it's our kids together. And then working together like that as a family, I think that's what helps make Paul Hollow such a success. We have some early evidence that it's working. Um, we see districts, especially uh, districts like Pasco County, where they have really, uh, as, as a district, and then the schools uh, following on after that, have made sure that their systems are aligned behind this one clear vision that every student should have access to rigorous education. And they've cut out all the noise. So they've stopped doing things that don't align with that clear vision. And it's meant that everyone from the top of the district to the educators in classrooms are all working toward the same goal and can't get distracted. The school is different today than in my first experience in a way that the teachers, the principals, all the staff are working as one. Um, I found that in the school now, the principal is very hands-on. They, uh, they attend to all things very swiftly, um, and they have a cohesiveness that wasn't there before, and I think it starts really at the top. The, the, everything rises and falls on leadership, and so when you have a principal that truly understands all the, the moving parts about what creates a great school culture and a great school climate, uh, you're going to have success. Having the vision isn't important unless it actually gets implemented and that comes down under the shoulders of principals and teachers and so to have a school leader who understands that vision deeply and knows that when she walks into a classroom she knows what she's looking for and she can communicate that vision to her teachers and to her families and to her students is critical. It's not something you can take for granted and say we've established a growth mindset in our school and move on. It's something that you have to cultivate. And I think that's something that, that does set Quail apart is that we are risk takers in that we will adjust when we need to adjust in a timely manner in order to make things happen for, for staff and for students. We say all the time a vision is important, but unless the vision actually gets enacted and permeates the system and becomes the foundation for decision making by adults, the vision doesn't matter. When your administration is willing to pull groups and work as hard as you do and you see that day in and day out, you have an instructional co coach that is just as invested in the students as you are um, and willing to put in every bit of the extra hours that you do, um, it makes such a difference. And then seeing those kids every single day who come in and they're happy to be at school because they, they fit in and because they're loved and they know it is, that's it. We truly believe that we can make a difference for the kids' lives. So we have children who live in generational poverty, and we let that drive us in the sense that we believe what we can do on a day-to-day -day basis can get them out of poverty. And we know they need us for their lives.